My name's Aaron Gaudet, and I'm the director and editor. And uh... my name's Gita Palapoli, and I'm the producer and interviewer. You have to go to Bangor, Maine. You can't believe the kind of welcome that the troops get. And it doesn't matter what time of the day or night these flights are coming in, there are people that show up every single time. We shot for a little over three years, and then post-production lasted a little less than a year. We were both working at television news stations in Grand Rapids, Michigan, when we started shooting the movie at uh, competing stations, and our friend uh, kind of connected us together. Aaron and I started dating um, about three months before we actually decided to start the project, and we actually were going home to meet his mom, and that's when we actually discovered the film and realized just how yeah. powerful it was. It's about these three senior citizens in Bangor, Maine, that go to this little airport there day and night to greet soldiers going to Iraq and Afghanistan and coming home. My name is William Knight. I live in Maine. I thought we were just going to walk into an empty terminal. None of us were expecting anything like that. None of us. Welcome to Bangor. It's just a good feeling. You get addicted to it. You can't give it up. Welcome home, guy. Thank you. I appreciate you. There's cell phones in there. Free to use. Talk all you want. Call somebody up. Make them happy, ugly, or haunty. <laughs> How long can they sustain this? You know, they've been doing this, and they they're still there. And for them, you know, they've found this really inspiring, great thing that gets them through all their obstacles and gets gets them through each day so they can get to the airport again. There's certain societies that really bring their elders in and this isn't one of them. This is kind of like you have you you don't have a purpose anymore so uh, you know go they you know you get kind of pushed out of society. Like this last election it's Joe the plumber. Like it's it's you're you're yeah. kind of known for what you do. Mm -hmm. So when you retire and suddenly you're just Joe, you know, it's <laughs> like, oh, well, we don't, we don't need Joe, we need a plumber. Especially in the time that we're in right now, I feel like anybody can make a difference in somebody's life, even with small gestures as well. So really it's about figuring out how you can kind of contribute in your own community and give back. If you want to make a documentary, the first thing is, you know, somehow get a camera and just start doing it. Because mm -hmm. if you wait for the funding, I think you'll never... Do it. And our, our film would be very different actually if we did stop shooting two years and you know so much has happened with the lives of our three characters and their storylines have really started to develop and if we stopped shooting just because we didn't you know want to shoot anymore it would be a story that probably wouldn't be out there at all so I mean for us yeah. it was worth staying with the story and just believing in yourself that you saw something from the beginning and if you let it play out your story will really develop. It's not, it's not a political film whatsoever but it's really about just you know people helping people and that generosity that's there without having to get something in return. Hopefully it inspires other people to say, oh, you know, maybe there's not troop greeting in my community, but I can find something that if I pitch in and do something, I can help people. Four yeah. years of doing the movie, four years of dating. We got engaged over the course of time, so it's all one big crazy relationship. Yeah.